good time? Yes, I have enjoyed it. Right. And she came in from the ranch. She was a midwife. She came in from the ranch. And my mother, my dad brought my mother in. And they stayed in that house till I was born. Oh, okay. So. So you were born here, but your parents were born in Italy, right? Yeah. Yeah, both of them born in Italy. I went to, uh, when I went to Italy, I went to found my mother's house and I found the church that she went to but I never did find my dad's gotcha. I couldn't find him how did you and Nano meet let me see well I was going to the skating ring <laughs> he was in the CC camp well, at the camp that they have for uh, to make parks that the president started during the war uh, not during the war but during the depression and uh, I met him there and started, well, started looking at each other and finally started going back together, going together. And we dated for about uh, oh, six months and then we got married. How did he ask you to marry him? <laughs> he just said, we're going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He didn't have a <laughs> ring or anything because we couldn't afford nothing like that in those days. It was during the Depression. Nobody had any money. So uh, I had just gotten out of school and uh, I was going with somebody else, but I quit going with him so I could go with <laughs> no, no. What day did you get married? Uh, June 19th, 1919. Oh, wow. Do you remember how old you were? Well, I must have been 19 or 20. Oh, okay. That's cool. Did you, ha did you have a wedding dress, or did you guys just get a little I had, ceremony? I had a dress from the first new dress I ever got. Oh, wow. From the, this little dress shop, and it cost me about $3. $3? <laughs> $3? Yeah, during those days, we couldn't afford anything else. Right. I wore hand-me-downs most of my life, and then when I got old enough, I made my own clothes. And after that, when I got married, I was able to get a new dress. Oh, that's awesome. All $13. I mean, $3. $3? Uh, and I thought that was really good. Right. And my mother fixed a big dinner ravioli, <laughs> and everything good. This was on your wedding night? On my wedding day. And I got married in the judge's house. I didn't even have a wedding. Oh. But we couldn't afford those, those things. Right. So. Right. But it was good enough for us. So. That's no awesome. No honeymoon, though. No honeymoon either? No, no. Didn't even know what a honeymoon was. <laughs> Nani, did they have, did they have prom when you were in high school? Did I what? Did you go to the prom? Oh yeah. What was that like? It was fun, but you know, in those days, they didn't have dates. The girls went by themselves, and the boys went by themselves, and then we just met all up there. Oh, okay. Did you go to Fort Bragg High School? I did. Uh, what? Did you go to high school in Fort Bragg? Yeah. Then I went, uh, what, two, three summers in 
a humble state in Eureka. I went there during the summer. What were you studying? I wanted to be, where was I staying? What were you studying? Oh, for, I wanted to be a third grade teacher. <laughs> Did you ever do that? No, I finally quit because it was just too hard. I, during, during the, when Bob was going to school yet, and I'd go to Ukiah twice a week for classes, and then I went up there to, I think it was three three summers. My girlfriend went with me. She was a teacher already. And then it was just too hard, so I think I quit. Right. I decided I just didn't want to do it. So then I started volunteering to do this and do that. So I volunteer for quite a few things. I volunteered at the senior center, at the, the nursing home, uh, the food bank, the food kitchen, okay, well, and uh, a medical thing at the hospital, and just I know, ev well, everything I could. Then I was a den mother for scouts, and dad was a yeah, scout master. So we kept busy, and then uh, I got in oh, okay, 19... Uh, 1994, was it? I think it was. I have to look and see. But uh, I got Volunteer of the Year Award for Fort Bragg. Oh, how cool! <laughs> so you were a den mother when uh, Grandpa and Bob were in Scouts? The what? You, your, your sons, they were in Scouts, and you were the den mother? Yeah. Did you like den, that? I was a den mother for Cup Scouts. That's cool. And that I did that for what four years, and then uh, Nono was a, a scoutmaster. He used to take him out hunt, uh, camping, and went to uh, summer camp with him. It was really it was it was a lot of fun, and we used to go out. We had to get to the scout camp, we had to go on the train that goes to Willis. We used to go on that to get out there. Uh, oh, they had a lot of doing things. I, we didn't have a, a lot, but uh, what we had never cost much. Right. Uh, Do you remember how old you were when when you had your sons? When I had Bill? Yes. I was, uh, I guess, 20. 20? Yeah, I think so. I have to, t I can't really remember that like that, but I think it was, yeah, let's see, I was thinking. Uh, I got it written down, but I can't remember. He was 19 or 20. Yes, And then how much younger is Bob? He's uh, four years younger. Four years younger? Yeah. So, you're pretty well known for your really big teapot collection. You know what I did, what? Your teapot collection. Well, that was kind of a... I didn't really start the collection. I just had... When I got married, they gave me a, a, a shower. Somebody brought me some teapots. And then... This fellow that bought a house down on Franklin Street, there was some teapots there, so he gave me those, and I had them over the a shelf over the sink, and uh, people would come over to the house to visit, and they see the teapots. So when they the teapots, so when they came back, they'd bring me a teapot, <laughs> and then my brother lived in. Uh, Fremont, he'd go to garage sale, uh, flea markets, and he found some teapots there. When he came to Fort Bragg, he'd bring me teapots. So that's how the collection started. Do you know how many you have? Over 200. Over 200? Yeah. That's awesome. And your favorite is the silver abalone shell? Yeah, the one that Stephen brought me. Right. Yeah. Have you collected them from all kinds of places? Yeah, I got some. When a minister from my church went to Italy, 
he bought me one there, and my girlfriend when she went to uh, when she built the garage. Was it? Uh, she built the, the washroom. I can't remember where she where she went, and she bought me one from there. I got three of them. They bought a oh, and Danny went to. Uh, that's that's a that's a neat house. Not Ireland. Uh, Scotland. I can't remember where he went. Australia. Is that where they got uh, kangaroos or something? Yes. Okay, he brought me one there. That's uh, Rochelle's uh, husband. Right. Right. We wanted you to tell a story of how you lost your finger. Oh. I, tell that, I told that story already, didn't I? Okay, I know, but, but not on that, okay. This girl, this girl and I were playing at this lady's house across the street from where my mother was visiting. And she told me not to go out of the yard, but I went anyway. And the lady where we went to at, across the street wanted some wood in the house to put in the stove. So she said she'd give us a nickel, whoever brought the wood in. So I grabbed the wood and I had it on my chopping block and I was putting wood on my arm and this girl, this she was older than me, and she said, no, I'm gonna bring the wood in because I want the nickel. <laughs> and I wouldn't do it, so she says, I'll chop your hand off. She had the ax up like that and uh, I know she was just kidding, but she missed the chopping block and hit my foot finger and cut it off. Oh no! And then she cut half of that, but the doctor sewed this one back on, but he didn't do a, he didn't fix it like he's supposed to. Right. And so that's the way it's crooked like that. So, and that's the story of my finger. How you <laughs> lost your finger? I can still. Did remember. she get in? Did she get in trouble? No, she didn't, but I did because I left the yard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and my, uh, I, th I remember when I was uh, in the doctor's office and the doctor showed me he had a, a little dish there and he had my finger in there. <laughs> oh, no. Was that scary? I can still remember that. So, and it, I didn't. Uh, I never missed it, though. It didn't bother me. It didn't bother well, you? No, because probably didn't have sense enough to. <laughs> right. How old were you when that happened? I think I was three or four years old, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. When did you go to Italy? In 97. Uh, okay. 1997. Do you know what part of Italy? In uh, uh, Tuscany. Tuscany. Yeah. Okay. Where the Leaning Tower of Pisa is. Yes. Yeah, and I stayed a month there with my cousin and the family and my uh, my cousin's uh, son, my, would be my nephew. He took us all over. Took me and uh, my girlfriend. My girlfriend. I, the two of us went together over there. So, oh, how awesome. It was, it was fun. And we went all over quite a few places. Right. So, Did you have authentic Italian pasta? The what? Did you have authentic Italian food? Is it different than it is here in the States? Oh, the... How was the food? They're mostly, you know, pastas and things like that. And they, I remember we went one time, they took me to a restaurant and they had pizza, and she, he thought that was great. Yes. And uh, come to find out, pizza was not uh, originated by the Italians. It was originated by the Chinese. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what somebody told me, though. No, uh, that was not originated in Italy. So, but they sure did like it. I'm not, I'm not much of a pizza eater. No. What's no. your favorite food? I don't know. A little bit of everything, I guess. A little bit of everything? Yeah, because when I was raised, it was during the Depression, we didn't have, we ate mostly out of the garden. Everything 
was fresh out of the garden and my mother had chickens. We had fresh eggs and had chicken, rabbit, and my dad always butchered, they butchered the beef and pork and, you know, salted it down and we, that's what we ate during the year. Uh, Your garden is impressive. Uh, I You have a very impressive garden outside. Oh, yeah. Your tomatoes look amazing. Yeah, did you see them? I did, yes. Yeah. They are looking great. Yeah, boy, they sure taste good. Uh, yes. Ooh. Do you make your own sauces with them? Me and, da me and Dottie raise those. They we, look really we work good. We together on them. Yeah? Well, we planted, we thought we planted zucchini, too, but... It turned out to be pumpkin. Oh! <laughs> the, the, they put the wrong, the wrong, uh, the wrong seeds side in there. In there, yeah. And we kept waiting for the zucchini. And uh, anyway, when she went back in that store, she told them, "They says, well, sometimes they do make mistakes." <laughs> learn your gardening from your mom and dad. What? Did you learn gardening from your mom and dad? Well, not really, cause. No. We didn't do any of the planting or anything, my my dad, but uh, whenever it was ready to pick things, then we had to, they picked them, I mean, he picked them, and we'd have buckets, my brother and I and my sister, and we'd have to bring them to the house. Uh, okay. Like, he'd dig up, like, potatoes, and, like, if we want, like, Saturday would be our day that we could do what we wanted. And we could go to the show, to the movies, but before we went, we had to do work on out in the garden and take care of that before we could go. With it. But he did all the weeding and the spading and planting and everything. And my mother took care of the flowers and the herbs. Okay. And my dad took care of everything else. What movies do you remember? Do you remember going to see any movies in particular? Uh, not really. No. No. What did you like to do as a kid? What did we do? When you were growing up, what did you like to do for fun? <laughs> you know, this place here was uh, next door. This was all woods in there. There was this house and another house up there and another one over there. But the rest of it was all woods, trees uh -huh. and brush and stuff. Right. And we used to, my sister and I used to clear a place out in the, where the trees and things were, and we would uh, make like a little playhouse. Oh, okay. So you'd play outside we'd, a lot? We'd have, we'd have little boxes and, and cans and things like that, like we were cooking. <laughs> right. And my, and my brother, he was, he was a little hilly again. He was, <laughs> You couldn't hold him still for anything. He was always into trouble. But uh, he had a bicycle. He got, we didn't, my dad didn't buy it. He, my brother found parts here and parts there and he put one together and he would hide it so nobody could use it but him. And one day he was gone, he forgot to lock the door. So I took his bicycle <laughs> and uh, I couldn't ride it, so I wrecked it. <laughs> oh, no. Was he mad? Uh, and I got in trouble for it. <laughs> so then, not only that, I had one doll. When I was growing up, I got a doll. And he got mad because I broke his bicycle, so he broke my doll. Oh, no. <laughs> How many brothers and sisters do you have? <clears throat> you know what? How many brothers and sisters do you have? One brother and one sister. Are you the oldest? No, my brother was 11 months older than me. <laughs> oh, okay. And my sister was five years younger than me. Oh, okay. Yeah. She died. She was 24 when she died. Oh. So, and another story about me was uh, when we lived at uh, Camp One at 10 Mile, and uh, they had a shoot where the logs used to go down to the river. Right. And uh, the c cabin where we lived was pretty close. So 
we used to play out in the yard. My mother wouldn't let us go out of the yard. And, uh, well, there was really no fence, but it was like a border thing. And my brother talked me into going with him to the shoot that one day. And we got over there. And my brother says, hold on to me. I'm going to sit in the chute where the logs went down. <laughs> and I, when he got in there and I was holding on to him and I heard my mother holler to call us and I got scared so I let go of him. He started down the chute to go into the thing and he got slivers all over his butt. Oh no! <laughs> but that stopped him so then we both got spanked because we went out of the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the house that you grew up in? The what? Is this the house that you grew up in? Did you grow up in this house? Not, not next door. Oh, you grew up next door. Yeah, from three years old, I grew up. From, we moved into town from camp. We moved into town and stayed in the house with somebody else for, until this house was ready. And then we went next door. Okay. We, we grew up next door. Okay, and then you and Nano bought this house? Then we bought this, yeah. It was during, right after the war, the people that owned it, uh, they were all scattered and some were dead. Some got killed at the war, in the war. And uh, it stayed boarded up for quite a while because there was a, <clears throat> like a cyclone and it took off the roof, broke the windows. And it stayed that way, so then they had a sign on there, <clears throat> it was to be sold for taxes. So we uh, uh, sent a letter to Ukiah and then had Sacramento and found out that we could buy it, but we had to pay the back taxes and things on it. And it was a lot of rigmarole, but we finally got it, and then they, we worked on it. So, well, first, before we bought it, one of the girls that uh, her mother and father had it, uh, her and her husband and the kids came here from, they lived in Reno, Nevada, and uh, she, uh, they stayed here for about two or three months, but they kept the cold, the kids kept the cold all the time, she said, that it was, this weather wasn't good for them, so they asked us if we wanted to buy it. And we paid, for two lots in the house, we paid $2,400. Wow. Wow. $2,500 for the house. You paid that for this house? Huh? You paid that for this house in the two lots? Oh, well, it wasn't like this. It was, you know. Right. But uh, we... No, no, did most of the remodeling, him and my dad. Right. You know, but uh, that's what we paid for. $2,500? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's worth a lot more these days. Yeah. And then next door, we sold that house. That was when the houses were cheap then. We sold that one for uh, twenty five. Twenty-five thousand, I think. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And if we'd have waited a few months, we could have got a lot more for it. And then the lady that came this morning, she, uh, I think she paid. Oh, I don't know, over, over three thousand, thirty-five thousand. I forgot what she paid, but a lot more than what the other lady paid for it. Right. But we had to sell it because my brother wanted to buy a house over at the lakes and uh, I had to give him his share. So we sold it and then we bought the house over there where Bob lives for Bob and uh, Diane when they lived there. So. So you have Bob and then Grandpa Bill. Do you have any other kids? Huh? How many kids do you have? Just Bill and Bob. Okay, just those. Yeah. No daughters? No, no. 
I Did you ever want one? Dottie's my daughter. Oh, she's your daughter. Yeah. Yeah, you hit the uh, daughter-in-law jackpot on her. What? You hit the jackpot on Grandma Dot. Yeah, yeah, I did. Bill hit the jackpot. <laughs> that he yeah. did. Yeah, he, uh, I told him, I said, you don't know how lucky you are. Well, it's, it was your mom's, uh, your mom's, grandma's right. third marriage and his third marriage. And I said, you know, they say the third. Third time's the charm. The best. Yeah. So. The third time is the charm. Yeah, that's right. And anyway, so I, they both are happy and both of them, they, they, they just needed each other. They did. Mm -hmm. so. so they got married right here in your living room, right? The what? They got married right here in the living room, right? Yeah, right here, right down in front of that heater. <laughs> so I heard that Nana wanted to wear his overalls and you wanted him to wear a suit. The what? I heard that Nana wanted to wear his overalls. Yeah. And you wanted him to wear a suit. Well, I wanted him to wear a certain thing. I can't remember what it was. And he was. He says, well, "What? What difference does it make? We're at home." He says, "So I can wear my." My, uh, the ones that he worked in all the time. But right. Clean. But we finally talked him into changing. <laughs> oh. And we had the, uh, we had the party out in the garage. Because <laughs> everybody didn't fit in the house. Yeah. Feels like your house is always full of people when I come over here. Huh? Feels like your house is always full of people when I'm over here. Yeah, well, that's... That's good. Yeah. Oh yeah. So another. So how did you um, become a part of the church? I was Catholic because uh, all the Italians, most Italians are Catholic. Uh, my mother and dad. My dad absolutely just don't want to go to church, and my mother was uh, uh, so involved in the church in Italy, and uh, it was not a happy one. So she wouldn't go to church either, but she sent us to church. Your first. But they, because I didn't get married in the church, I was baptized in communion there, but I didn't be, get baptized. I mean, I didn't uh, get married there, so the, the priest wanted us to get married to baptize Bill and Bob, and they wouldn't do it unless we got remarried. So I just told Bill and Bob, you find another church to go to that uh, you like, and we'll go to that church. I said, as long as you go to church, you could got to, whether you want to or not, you're going to church. And so Bill was taking piano lessons from this lady, and she asked him if uh, I would care if he would sing in the choir because he had a nice voice. And uh, he asked me if he could, and I said, sure. So then when he went, I went with him, him and Bob and I. And uh, Nona wouldn't go because he was Baptist. <laughs> so we went there, and then he decided he liked that church because one of his friends belonged there. So we started going there. And uh, the new uh, minister, they were just getting this new minister. So him and I started, the new minister and I started at the church at the same time. And uh, my kids were uh, received into the church there, baptized. And uh, I just started, I was received into the church. So I just started going there. And... Uh, I've been happy ever since. I really love that church. How long have you been going to the same church for? Uh, I, I joined in 1950. 1950? Yeah. 1950. 50. Yeah. So that's almost 70 years. Yeah. Uh, and the minister that we had was, uh, uh, he was a young guy. And he was uh, from uh, Santa Rosa, and his mother and him lived in a little ranch in Santa Rosa. But he went to uh, 
I asked him how come he was Episcopalian because he was Lutheran to begin with. He says that he met some a minister from the, the Episcopal Church and that's really the English church. And uh, he liked it and he tried others and he said he liked that the best. So that's when he decided to be there. And he was really active. He got the kids all started to, for different things. He involved all the kids that he could. And he was really good. He was there for 35 years, never changed it. The Catholic Church, every few years, they change ministers. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the way they treated some of the people. The ones that had money, they treated good. And the ones that they didn't have, they didn't treat. So I didn't like it. So that was my story about the church. <laughs> <laughs> so what was you... it like growing up in the Depression? The what? What was it like growing up in the Depression? As a what? In the Depression. Oh, Depression? Really, uh, it was, uh, we were used to it. We didn't know any better, you know. We didn't have anything. We didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. or anything like that, but we may do, okay, every, you know, we never went hungry. What did your mom and dad do for work? My dad worked down at the, uh, well, first he worked at, at uh, up in the woods in the logging company, and then he moved, when we moved to town, he went to work at the mill, down at the lumber mill, and uh, that is it. That's all that we did. So, and me, I worked uh, uh, when when uh, Nana went into the uh, service. I went to work at the uh, at the, a grocery store, an Italian grocery store down on the corner. I worked there for a few years, then I quit, and uh, I guess that's when I went to Italy. And then when I came back, I went to work at uh, Union Lumber Company store. That's the one that owned the mill. So, but the town has really changed since uh, since the mill closed down, and the fishing. There's no hardly no fishing as much as it used to be. So, it's more of a tourist town now than it is a logging town like it used to be. Right. So, Nani, you're now a great, great grandmother. Did do you remember your grandparents, and did you have great grandparents? I had them, but they were all in Italy. Okay. I, I didn't know any of them. All I knew was my cousins. Got it. Yeah, because the rest of them all died. My mother had uh, two sisters, and I think two or three brothers. Did, did you know about the pea farm? No. Mom, want a couple more things. You need to tell them about um, Guido. Oh, about oh, the time we left them at the library? <laughs> <laughs> well, is it, am I talking now to it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, me and my girlfriend, we never had yeah, dates with people. We. And like a, a bunch of boys would get together and a bunch of girls would get together and we'd all visit. Well, we couldn't tell my mother and dad, you know, we couldn't tell our parents. We had to just tell them we were going to the library. <laughs> and then we could meet them and go take a walk with them, with the guys that we liked. And uh, every time we went, her mother and dad, my girlfriend's mother and dad would say, you got to take Guido with you. That was her brother. And so we take him and we stick him in the library and tell him to wait there until we came back. Well, one night the library closed and we had, hadn't picked him up. So the librarian was standing out on the sidewalk with him and really chewed us up because we hadn't picked him up and let him standing out there by himself. So we couldn't do that anymore. That was your friend's little brother? Yeah. So, Mom, instead of saying you had a boyfriend, what was the words that you used when you talked about your, the you what? know, when you would say somebody was in love 
or they had a boyfriend. What you what did you used to call it? Who? When you when you like when you had somebody that you were that you liked. Yeah. Or you were in love with them. What did you call that? We didn't call them that. We just. We no, 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 no. It was a name that you used to use when you would say somebody's got this about a boyfriend. I don't know what you mean, dog. Okay. Because you used to tell me, oh, hey, and you'd lift up your eyebrows. He has a case on him. Then I had a case on who? On whoever it was. That's how you used to tell me when. Well, that we, we were just all mainly just friends, really. Like, we had a ballpark down on the corner there where the movie theater is. And uh, lots of times we just moved up and moved down there, sitting on bleachers and all of us. Just visit together. We didn't really have dates, you know, once in a while, but nobody ever, like, I would never go alone with a boy any place. We always, there was always at least two girls and, and the guys, but uh, never, never by ourselves. <laughs> okay, so um, did you tell them about, about your first job when you were doing that um, in the factory or whatever it was? When I worked at the, oh, the frozen feed. No, I'm. My first job was yeah. picking, picking peas. There we go. I couldn't think of it. Okay, tell the, tell the, no, I, tell Maddie. Oh, the, the first job I had, I was still in school though. I picked pick peas up at, uh, on the other side of Ten Mile, and then the next job I had was uh, sorting peas that they had a, a frozen. Stokely's uh, frozen peas, and I worked there. Then I went to the uh, uh, fish house and worked there. I packed fish for the government. <laughs> How much did you get paid? Sixty-five cents an hour. <laughs> no, let's see. Sixty-five was at the pea plant, and the fish plant was a dollar. And then I got when I went to work at uh, the uh, Union Lumber Company was a dollar sixty-five an hour. So that was, to How, me that was good. When you were little, did you like, did you go buy candy or what did you spend your money on? I gave it to my mother and dad. Oh. I did, we never, we never had money to spend for anything else. Okay. The only thing I remember buying with money, my mother bought it for me, was a coat. Because I needed a coat. A coat? Yeah. Yeah, that's about it, huh? Yeah? Did you, and what about when you guys went dancing? Did you guys, huh? did you Did you have uh, your dancing friends over when you got used to go dancing? Oh, we used to, we went dancing, not when I was young, no. But when we uh, uh, joined up different organizations, we joined, we belonged to a, a party club? No, no, and I belong to a party club. <clears throat> they met uh, once a month, and uh, then we belonged to the uh, organization of the Redmen and uh, Pocahontas and the Druids, and we'd have uh, meetings, but once a month, every once in a while, we'd have. Uh, uh, get togethers when you have a party and a dance. So we always had fun doing different things. Good deal. And we would travel like we would, would we, oh, would we went square dancing for a long time. We learned how to square dance. That's when Nono first started dancing. He would never dance before. But when we started square dancing, and we used to go to different places. To square dance. Do you think you can still square dance? What? Do you think you can still square dance? Not now. <laughs> <laughs> but if your if your legs were okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I would love it. I would love. I'd love that square dancing. And we used to perform for different things, like when he had Paul Bunyan. We'd have square dancing out on the street. Oh gosh. I used to be fun. <laughs> You're still fun. Nani, have you ever met anyone famous? Uh, no, not that I can think of, no. No? 
I would have liked to, but it only to me one, but I didn't. Yep. I used to, I used to think we, when we went to Alabama, I thought maybe I'd meet uh, Hank Williams, but he died just before we got there. Oh, dang. Did you like to listen to country music? Oh, I love country music. That was my favorite. So you liked Hank Williams? Hank Williams, yeah. But uh, I think, let's see who was my favorite. He was my favorite after he started, but there was another one before him. Ernest Tubbs was my favorite then. It was them, and then them Reeves and Eddie Arnold. Oh, they were all good. So country music was your top favorite? The what? Was country your, your favorite music? Country music was my favorite, yeah. Did you know there's a Hank Williams the third now? He's a singer. He's a what? There's a country there's a Hank Williams Jr. and a Hank Williams the third. No, I didn't like his music as much as his dad. Oh. But uh let's see what was I gonna say? I forgot now. Oh uh Donald's brother Claude played the guitar and he sang and he wrote music. He was blind but he could read music with his hands and he would write his own songs. He wrote, one of them was called uh, Only a Rose, something like that. And we got the record someplace where there, it, it didn't play too good, but it was uh, something that he made for us. Then his younger brother played the guitar also and sang, but uh, Donald met Kitty, Kitty, Kitty Wells was the oldest one that I can remember, and he used to sing with her. Oh, goodness. Not, not, not on the thing, but on, on records. He was good with her, and she was good. So you don't, you said you don't really have a favorite food. Do you have favorite, uh, favorite color, or? Uh, yeah, blue, blue and red were my favorite colors. Right. They still are. <laughs> favorite anything else? Do you have what? Anything else that's favorite to you? Fra favorite grandchild. I, I, I no favorites. I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the answer you need to give. That's good. I got one question for you. If there's any advice that you could pass on through the generations, what would it be? The what? Any advice that you could pass on from one generation to the other, what would it be? Something to pass on. To just eat, eat good, no smoking, no drinking, no alcohol, and uh, don't sit around all day. Just move around and find something to do because the more you sit and watch TV and play your games, the less you get out of life, you're better off to just find something to do. That's all I can say. I, I know I would never want, if I was growing up again, I don't think, well, I just, I don't think I would do it. I think I would just do the way I grew up. I, that's the way I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Get friends, get friends together. We didn't have any money, but we had a lot of fun. Yeah.